Don't worry, though. The one I've got for you is American-made. Forty-five, huh? Hmm. Incredible. When it comes to the 45 versus 9mm debate in video games, developers clearly have a preference. From Metal Gear to Far Cry to Resident Evil, these could all be prime examples of the 45 ACP bias. But which is actually better, and what for? Today I'm Pliskin, and we're going to outline the virtuality versus reality of the 45 ACP. Designed by John Moses Browning in 1904, the 45 ACP, which stands for Automatic Colt Pistol, is a handgun cartridge that took the sidearm world by storm when it and the 1911 began phasing out the, until that point there, de facto revolvers. It operates at a low chamber pressure with only 21,000 PSI, in comparison to the 9mm, 35,000 PSI. The standard pressure for 45 ACP is subsonic, which soon led to its pairing with suppressors towards the late 60s and even into the late 90s. As previously mentioned, the 45 ACP made its first major impression with the 1911, which was the US service pistol from World War I to the early 80s where it was replaced by the Beretta M92 and 9mm. In 1928, the 50 round drum mag fed Thompson took the streets of the United States and later on the streets of Europe in World War II by storm. In 1964, the Mac 10 was developed as a compact 9mm or 45 ACP suppressed submachine gun. It was utilized by special forces for a short while before being relegated to 80s action movies. In 1999, a replacement for the MP5 was commissioned because the MP5 couldn't really fit a 45 ACP into its design. HK responded with the UMP. Its 45 variant is light, reliable, but was ultimately never adopted in any major capacities due to intense recoil. In 2010, the Chris Vector made use of the 45 ACP in a compact and modular package. The Vector is utilized widely by police and civilians alike to this day. In video games, the 45 stands as the undisputed go-to pistol and SMG caliber. It's the perfect middle ground between the anemic 9mm and the powerful but rare Magnum calibers. A lot of the 45's ubiquitous nature can be attributed to the 1911's presence in games. You see, a lot of game devs live in places where access to firearms is not usually an option. So when it comes to modeling, they usually resort to airsoft replicas. That's why you always saw this optic on everything back in the day. In a lot of airsoft shops, the 1911 is usually the cheapest and most mass-produced style of airsoft gun there. As more and more 1911 models were created, they started to get reused as assets in multiple games. This led to a comfort and familiarity that created an expectation in gamers' minds as seeing this gun as a reliable option. World War II shooters made guns like the Thompson feel at home in the virtual space. However, its most interesting depiction is easily in Resident Evil 4, as the unlockable infinite ammo Chicago Typewriter. The reason it's called the Chicago Typewriter in-game is because that was the nickname that gangsters used to give this gun, because of the distinct sound it would make when they would shoot it. A little detail about the Thompson in Resident Evil 4, it's actually modeled wrong. You see, with the drum mag, you had to use a 1928-style Thompson with a charging handle on the top. However, during World War II, due to budgeting and the need to produce a lot of guns, they cheaped out a little bit more, went with just basic stick magazines, and moved the charging handle onto the side. 
So Leon's using a World War II style Thompson, however he's still using the drums associated with that older style of Thompson. So yeah, coupled with the gangster outfit, this is such a strong nod to 20th century pop culture. You don't really see the Mac-10 much as it's usually overshadowed by its cooler little brother, the Mac-11. Still, having Snake use this gun in his OG games is a good callback to the character and film he was inspired by. In the Y2K years, the UMP definitely had a strong presence. It was almost a mascot for StickPage.com. Jack, the main character of the SWAT games, i.e. the best cover shooter made in Flash, used this as his signature gun, so it definitely made an impression on me when I was younger. Of course, in the late 90s, we also saw guns like the MK23 arrive into the medium through MGS. My favorite variant of this massive, hard-hitting Spec Ops gun is in Metal Gear Solid 2, mostly because of how realistic aiming with pistols is in that game. I've talked about the symbolic nature of Snake passing the iconic weapon to Raiden and moving on to a better version for himself. The most recent cool splash I've seen a 45 gun make in video games is with the Chris Vector. When Far Cry 3 came out, this gun was so cool and so alien. I'd argue the Chris Vector has taken the P90's place as that futuristic but still distinctly human gun. <laughs> Make me a sandwich! In video games, it's no-brainer. 45 is stronger, quieter, and comes in better guns. In real life, though, it's not so black and white. The 45 does have more stopping power than a 9mm. This is due to more mass hitting the target. However, hollow point 9mm rounds are capable of doing more damage, or at least equal damage, when compared to a 45 hollow point. Standard 45 suppresses better than standard 9mm, however, subsonic 9mm fired out of a specialized package like the MP5 SD will be a lot quieter than a 45 ACP suppressed vector. For me, though, the deciding factor is capacity. A standard 9mm handgun usually holds around 15 to 17 rounds, and that outmatches the 45 standard of 12 to 13 rounds. Volume of fire tends to dictate who wins a firefight, so I'd go with the higher capacity 9mm. That being said, a lot of civilian defensive scenarios don't usually end in firefights. So for taking down a knife-wielding crackhead, or putting holes into a group of home invaders, or point-blanking a mugger, the power of your average and cheap 45 ACP isn't such a bad fit. So as a civilian, don't be afraid to cowboy bebop it up with a Glock 30. And on that note, you sure do get choice nowadays. The Vector, the Springfield XD, the Glock 21 and the aforementioned 30, the USP 45, the HK 45, M&Ps and 45, it's not the super upgrade to 9mm, it's just another equally viable option. Watch any ballistics test on YouTube and you'll see how similar both these rounds perform. At the end of the day, the 45 is a tried and tested round, no better or worse than the 9mm unless you start looking at very specific applications. It's really just up to personal preference for most people. Or I guess in this case, it's up to game dev preference, and uh, I think we know what they're gonna pick. 45, huh? Hmm. Incredible. Ah! The feeding ramp is polished to a mirror sheen. Ah! The thumb safety is extended to make it easier on the finger. Ah! And not only that, nearly every part of this gun has been expertly crafted and customized. <laughs> The name's Eva. Nice titties. Mind if I, you know. 
this is Solid Snake. Hey, subscribe to Pliskin Boy. God damn it. You heard him. <laughs>